Welcome to How to Turbo Your Classic BMW Part 2. In the previous section, we covered what fuel pump and fuel injectors you need, and now we're going to look at ECUs. What ECU should I get? This is a huge question that we see all the time, and this is also one where your ECU pretty much doesn't care how much power you make. All your ECU's job is to do is to reliably and accurately fire the ignition coils and fuel injectors for your engine. It takes a lot of inputs from sensors that make that help it make decisions on how much fuel and how much ignition that ignition timing that it needs to provide to the motor and other things and it lets you have outputs so that you can turn on fans, fuel pumps and boost controllers things like that. So really what I'm getting at with this is a lot of different ECUs will work for your situation. Typically, people will argue one is better than another, but really it's basically just comes down to a lot of people's personal experience, especially with a tuner. Uh, some of the software is easier to use than others. And if someone is really familiar, say you have a friend who's a tuner and he's really familiar with Link ECUs and he wants to help you tune your car, you'll be asking for that person's help. It might be best to just go with what they're familiar with. A lot of them, you can't really go wrong. There are some bad ones out there, but for the most part nowadays, they're all really good. And really what it depends on is who will be tuning it. Who's actually gonna tune it? If you are gonna tune it and you're from you're okay with jumping in at the deep end and you wanna learn uh, something exotic and you're familiar with computers and you're very technic technically savvy, you know, feel free to jump into whatever you need. But if you're looking to just get your car tuned on a standalone ECU, find out what the local tuners around you, reputable tuners, are suggesting what they can tune and uh, go with what they have to say. We'll jump into kind of where things change on ECUs here over on the left side and why you would choose one over another and how to choose one for your budget. Typically, there's very inexpensive ECUs. We start at the very bottom with like Speedduino. It's uh, somewhat of an open source project and you basically buy the boards and solder them together, kind of like how old micro or sorry, old mega squirt products were made. It's uh, more of a DIY, definitely more DIY, and it's not for everyone, but they're coming out with more and more um, SMD units that are soldered all together for you and they're more compact, they're really good. There's nothing wrong with it. It's just, you're gonna put in a lot more DIY time. It's gonna take more of your time to configure it and set it up and go through all the the little details of of, of that versus if you buy a, a more known product that isn't as DIY. So for example, they start, they range from like $300 and up and your mild is gonna be like a micro squirt ECU. Those are what a lot of my tuning videos are based on. I have a lot of experience with micro squirt. They work really well when they're set up and I've tried to help people understand their intricacies and all the little things that, that make them, uh, that need that need to be set up for those to run. And uh, that's a really easy way to go. They're, they are only flying lead. So up here on the right, you'll see they just have a plug with exposed wires. So you need to wire them yourself. They do not plug and play although Megasquirt does have a plug and play that essentially uses the, the computer from this and just has the right plug to go to your uh, old classic BMW ECU plug that goes into the wiring harness. Um, Max ECU Mini is another one that is really good. I like Max ECU. I've uh, chosen a Max ECU uh, race for my E30 project that I have going on currently and look forward to using that a lot. But uh, yeah, they just range in price. It's like kind of what you can afford versus what your tuner suggests and what you're comfortable installing. There's a, it, it kind of, it kind of is more complicated uh, if you are, if you are not doing it yourself, there's a little more complication. Um, but really, if you're just paying someone to do it for you, you just choose something in your budget that they are familiar with. Uh, medium level, the Megasquirt PMP, we'll go over this more in a minute. That's just a plug and play. You just plug it right into your stock wiring harness and you can run uh, like a classic E30. And uh, Max, e Max ECU and Link ECU Master, the Black series and Holly, Haltech. There are so many out there. It's honestly, 
you can do a lot more research on your own and find out kind of what things are are more specialized to do. For example, like Holly, they really specialize in the V8 world. A lot of the LS stuff they have drop-on harnesses and stuff for. So it's not that you couldn't use it on an E30, um, but they're more specialized for other things. So you can kind of see you can kind of see what um, what different ECU manufacturers kind of specialize in, and and you can use them pretty much on any uh, any application. But it just depends on what you're trying to accomplish here. Then then there's the wild stuff. Uh, Motec, Cyvix, Life Racing, Max EC Pro, Holly Dominator, Haltech 2500. All those are more elite systems that have a lot more that have a lot more software capabilities and hardware capabilities. So really when you're buying an ECU, the more expensive they get, typically the more features you get and the more inputs and outputs you get. So if you need to run a ton of EGT sensors on every cylinder on a V8, you won't be able to do that without extra hardware on like a micro squirt, for example, or a, a mega squirt PMP, or a, you, you have to buy more and get more inputs and outputs, or you have to buy a separate box that's basically CAN communication that brings in those inputs. It's an expander box and then uh, communicates with the ECU from there. So basically, if we, if we sum it all up, find a tuner, ask what they suggest if it's in your budget there's a lot of options is essentially what we're getting at i could ramble on about this stuff for a while because i really like the ecu portion of this but just find someone reputable that you trust and and you can probably trust their suggestion if they're going to tune it there's basically two types of ecus there's one with a flying lead harness that you wire in and you create all of the connections yourself you make the harness and then there's a plug and play over here on the left. So you can just take this, plug it right into your E30 and start tuning. There are a lot of benefits and uh, there's a, there are a lot of pros and cons with going with one or the other. Typically, in my experience, I love getting a fresh new harness and I make them myself so it's not a big deal. But I love having a new harness because I don't have to deal with 30 year old crusty broken connectors. If you've ever taken an injector plug off on a classic BMW and it just immediately shatters into five pieces, you'll know what I'm talking about. They're full of grease and grime. They're not sealing well. It does cost more money to make a new harness, but in my opinion, that's worth it. That's an another reliability point of going with a new standalone ECU. You take this old 30 year old BMW that has issues with its MAF sensor and wiring harness and little plugs that go to your temp sensors that are all worn out and crusted and broken and replace all of that with brand new connectors and a lot of the time sensors that go along with that. So there's a reliability aspect of putting in a brand new standalone ECU with new wiring. And yes, that does come at a cost. Typically when you buy a flying lead harness, you're gonna have to plan four to 500 or even more. I mean, depending on how crazy you wanna get with your harness, you can spend well over double what your ECU cost on just a harness. But in a, like a more basic way, you know, plan on a few hundred dollars at least to get new connectors and uh, things like that. So these are kind of your options. This is just to get your feet wet. I, I could go into more detail and I might in another video, but really there's just essentially two types. You're gonna get a plug and play or a ECU that has a drop on harness that's specific to your motor. It's just, you wire it up and it's done. Or you're gonna be building your own harness and you just get flying leads. You just get a reel of wires and uh, you have to break them off and, and put them under their respective sensors.